General Relativity, step by step. Last time I used the equivalence principle to show that if you had a fish tank in space and a gravitational wave came by, then the fish would not notice, and neither would you, notice any um, disturbance, no disturbance to the force. Because you'd be in a local inertial frame and your coordinates would work and physics would work for you in the same, as, uh, same way that they work if there wasn't a gravitational wave. I also made the observation that if you had two fish tanks separated by a distance x, big enough for you to be unable to build an elevator, then you might notice some non-local physics going on, which might be altering the distance between the two. So I'm going to explore that today. Now last time, when I was working with the uh, uh, with gravitational radiation, I, I, I parametrized it in this rather peculiar format here. I'm going to re-parametrize it somewhat, uh, and I'll do that right now. Just give me a minute. To where I was. Pinch in and we'll start again. We have got G downstairs alpha beta equals flat space Minkowski metric plus a non-linear uh, term which I'm going to rewrite as in, in a slightly different way. I'm going to write it as epsilon sine omega t minus did I write which, which sign did I have? I had a minus there and a plus there omega z times the following matrix here, which I'll, I'll recast in a slightly different form. Uh, I'm going to call that alpha, that's going to be beta, that's going to be beta because it's symmetric, that's going to be minus alpha because of the trace condition. There. This thing I've called A. So you see I've got the two polarizations. And I'm further going to, uh, actually I'm going to ignore that epsilon as well. I was going to say epsilon is small, but I'm going to replace that condition with alpha and beta are small. See, I could have factorized it and taken it out, but what the hell. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is place these two fish tanks. I'm going to, these two fish tanks have got a world line that looks as follows. It's going to be T, X, Y, Z. That's my coordinates. So the world line of fish tank A, A, is going to be T, X, 0. And I'm just going to arbitrarily set the Y and the Z uh, coordinates to 0. Fish tank B is going to be T, x1, 0, 0. They're the world lines. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give both fish a, a, a stopwatch or a, a, a clock, and I'm going to choose two events on their world lines, x0, 0, 0, and 0, x1, 0, 0, and that's two events. And I'm going to ask what's the proper distance between these proper distance. Now before I answer that question I'm just going to remind myself what's going on physically. What's going on physically here is that both fish tanks are at rest at rest in two senses. Firstly there's no acceleration. The fish are undisturbed, they're not sloshing about, they're not worried about acceleration, they are sitting there in free fall. 0 G. They're also at rest in terms of coordinates. Coordinates. They are at rest in their coordinate system. Um, well, you see, I've written it down here. There's the world line where Y and Z are not changing. They are at rest in the coordinate system. In the coordinate system we have chosen, their fall velocity is that of a body at rest. Okay, so what's the proper distance? Everything should tell you, everything about your classical, intu not your classical intuition, but everything about your, your Newtonian intuition should say, we've got two objects that are at rest physically and at rest in a coordinate system. They should have the same separation between them, but that is not the case. Let's just remind ourselves what the definition of proper distance is. It's the integral of the square root of g alpha beta dx alpha dx beta. Now in this case we know that alpha, although it technically ranges between t, x, y and z, this one is the only one that's changing. Time is unchanging. x changes because it goes from x0 to x1 from one fish tank to the other, but the y and the z coordinates are constant. So we know that the only alpha coordinate we need to think about is x, and of course the only beta 
coordinate we need to think about is x as well. So if I write down what this looks like, it looks like the integral, well it is equal to the integral from x equals x zero for fish tank uh, a oops, to x equals x one for the other one times the square root of g you see the sum is kind of boring and pointless because the only non-zero term to consider is alpha and beta both equal to x x x <coughs> sorry excuse me dx dx equals the integral from x equals x zero to x one of the square root of gx x dx and now I can start to think about what the square root of gxx is because I set it up very nicely in this coordinate system here um, with alphas and small betas and stuff like that. Okay, so let's just do that. Equals the integral. Pinch in a bit. The integral from x equals x0 to x1 of the square root. I'll write a power half when I know how big it is. Of 1 plus alpha sine omega t, or did I say minus? I can never remember which sign I used. Uh, yeah, it's minus plus, isn't it? Minus omega t plus, um, plus omega z. There it is, dx. Yeah, we've got a time dependence here and a z dependence here. But, yeah, before I said that the only variable to consider was x, that, that was because that was, that was the only component of the metric tensor we're interested in. But that component of the metric tensor is itself a function of time and z. Uh, however, I did specify that z was equal to zero, which is here. And so I'm just going to cross that out. Oh, it's all to the power of half, isn't it? So that's the integral from x equals x0 to x1 of 1 plus alpha sine. Actually, it's a minus, isn't it, because of that minus. Minus alpha sine omega t to the power of half. Hmm. Is approximately equal to the integral from x0 to x1 of 1 minus alpha over 2 sine omega t dx equals x1 minus x0 times 1 minus alpha over 2 sine omega t. Aha! It oscillates. And this is what a gravitational wave is. I'm going to fill in some of the mathematical details because I've only done it in one direction. And we'll see, we haven't quite got to grips with the difference between the different components, the different polarizations. We've got an alpha and a beta term here. I'm only focusing on one direction here. I'll, 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 I'll fill in some of the details later. Let me summarize what we've just done. We have two fish tanks, both at rest. Each fish tank says, I am not accelerating. I've built an elevator on myself, the elevator is in free fall, I'm not going anywhere. Both fish tanks say that, and both fish tanks subsequently say, we have created a coordinate system in which we are at rest as well. Now that's not a powerful statement, all that says. I mean, you could be, you could be wobbling around and going, moving all around like that. Well, I could build a coordinate system that does that as well, that moves around as well. So it's not a strong statement, but even so, we've got a coordinate system in which objects at rest have constant um, constant x, y, and z coordinates. So it's a stronger statement than it might be for this particular system because of the physics of the situation. So we've got two objects at rest whose proper distance oscillates. And you can see this happening. Let's give each fish... There's your fish. Oops, restart required. Hmm. Cancel that. Here's another fish. That distance there, as measured by something like how much, 
how many wavelengths of light it takes to get from one to the other, changes. I can do all sorts of other things. I can give the fish a photon clock which bounces with... Oh no, I normally use red, don't I, for photon clocks? Let me do that. I've got new, new pens here which might be better. I've got a fish with a photon clock here and the fish can send a photon to the other fish who bounces the photon back. And this fish can say something like, it takes 13 bounces of my photon clock for the light that I send to come back. And then when time, I'm still in red, aren't I? When time changes, go back to black, when time changes, it takes 14 bounces of my photon clock for the light to come back from the other fish. So it's a real change. You can see it. Gravitational waves are extraordinarily difficult to grasp. So I'm going to give you this explanation and other explanations of, of um, how gravitational waves look and what they feel and what they mean. But for the moment, I want you to see. Well, it all follows from, the, it all follows from this calculation here, which is that the proper distance oscillates even though both fish tanks are at rest. Absolutely astonishing piece of reasoning. I'm going to stop there. Stop, 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 stop.